to another segment wisdom of god i would not want to take much of your time so we are going to get right into it by appreciating our maker for making it possible for us to be counted among the living today so you may want to close your eyes at this point father in the name of jesus we worship and exalt your holy name father we thank you for this opportunity to be yet again in your presence the bible says wherever the presence of the lord is there is liberty and father we prophesy liberty in this atmosphere we take authority over the principalities of this atmosphere we take authority over the powers we take authority over the rulers of the darkness of this world in this vicinity we take authority over the spiritual wickedness in high places in this vicinity and we take authority over the spirit of heaviness and of fear be arrested by the power of the holy ghost in jesus precious name father speak through me speak to your people let them in turn look up to you for the bible say they looked up to him their faces were lightened and they were not ashamed father when all is said and done take all the glory let your name be glorified in the mighty name of jesus amen now folks today's topic is what we call for the love of god praise the lord hallelujah our foundational scripture is taken from john 14 john chapter 14 verse 15 it says if ye love me keep my commandments now what does jesus mean by if ye love me keep my commandments what does he mean by that well on the evening before jesus was crucified jesus christ himself gave a very long private teaching to his disciples this conversation that they had happened in the upper room right after the lord's announcement that one of his disciples was going to betray him that is judah of course so judas so as part of the instruction jesus as part of all what jesus communicated to them jesus says if you love me you will keep my commandments this is actually our foundational scripture and in john for the we which we took from john 14 15 as christ's commandment is both a sign sorry as as our foundational scripture we that is where uh, we pulled out our foundational scripture from the part of the discussion christ had with his disciples shortly before he announced that oh sorry right after he announced who was going to betray him so the meaning or the essence of the of the passage is that obedience to christ's commandment is both a sign and a test of our love for him the connection between love for christ and obedience to him is a recurring theme in one of his apostles that is john's writings uh, you know one of his disciples so this is how we know that we love the that is we love the children of god how how do we know by keeping the commandment that the master himself had already given so by loving god and carrying out his commandment as well how do we know we love the children of god secondly by loving god and carrying out his commandments so in fact this is love for god that is this love for god is is doing exactly what the master asks us to do you know to keep his command in first john 5 2 to 3 so in the same upper room where they had that uh, conversation john quotes the master jesus saying yet again who so who whoever has my commands and keeps them in the whosoever has my command and keeps them is the one who loves me so 
basically if you don't love him you cannot keep or obey what he says so the one who loves me will be loved by my father so if you love me and obey me the father will love you and i too will love them and show myself to them john 14 21 we also see in, in John 15, 14. Now, what does Jesus mean when he says, keep my commands? Was Jesus referring to, what is it called, to, to sets of rules? No, they are not merely to be understood as obeying a series of moral instructions, rather, these commands encompass all of Jesus' words and teachings. So which in turn are actually God the Father's words. They are his words as well. So Jesus replied and said, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. It's as simple as that. These words you hear are not my own. Jesus said it. They belong to the Father who sent me. John chapter 14 from verse 23 to 24. Now, immediately after Jesus makes the statement, if you love me, you will keep my commandment, he says. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor. Some verses say counsel, some versions say counselor, some say comforter to be with you forever. This is John 14 16. So Jesus knows that keeping his commandment, sorry, keeping his command in this fallen world will require a divine source of power in the form of the Holy Spirit's his presence living within us now example of those who have demonstrated this love for god number one is our lord jesus our lord jesus himself who kept this very command about love actually came down and demonstrated it on the cross of calvary so the love of jesus christ and his life of obedience to the father is a very good example as we have said earlier so uh, we got this from john 14 31 so obeying christ's command means copying the example of jesus john 13 from 15 to 16 now loving jesus is not a mere feeling it's not just a feeling like the way you feel for your husband, your wife, whatever. It is an active, abiding, ongoing relationship of following and obeying your loving master. We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandment, first job two, three. So it's not a one day commitment. It is a lifetime, like forever commitment till eternity, by the way. So it's not a one day thing. Now, example two is the centurion who out of love for God built a synagogue. We have seen how God, sorry, how Jesus demonstrated his love for God by dying on the cross. So that is why we have access to the Holy of Holies. Now, that is why we also have, as he said in Revelation 12, 11, we overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb and with the word of our testimony. So if he didn't share the blood, where is the blood to use in overcoming the enemy? Where is it? So these are the things. Now, example two is the centurion who, out of love for God, built a synagogue for the people who are not even his own people. John 7, from verse 1 to 10. Let us have a quick read of it. Now, when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people he entered into Capernaum and a certain centurion servant who was steered unto him was sick and ready to die and when he heard of Jesus 
he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loved our nation, and he had built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself. For I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I am also a man set under authority, having under my, me soldiers. And I say unto one, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found such so great faith, no, not in Israel. And they that were sent, returning to the house, found the servant whole that had been sick. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, this is a passage that confirms that it does not matter who you are or where you come from. Only believe God and you will see his handwork in your life. It is not restricted to some certain people or some certain color or some certain physique. No. Believe and you shall see. And there shall be a performance as the Bible says. The centurion was not a Jewish man, neither was he a pastor or bishop, even a priest. He wasn't all those things. He only showed great love and great faith. That, that was why Jesus said, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. This centurion understood what it means to love God. That is why he built a synagogue for the people of that God that he loves. Why didn't he build a school or hospital or, or build a, a nursing home or something? You know, if it were the people, that is if it were the people that he loved. No, but he built a house of God for the people of God, communicating through this action. He was communicating that love, that he was communicating that love he has for the God of Israel by building a house for the God of Israel. I wonder about some Christians who claim to love God yet they hate Israelites. Are you for real? Check that your love properly. I am not saying to agree with their methods, but there's, there's no way you love this God of Israel that you will not love his people. It doesn't happen. So we also see love in 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 action uh, of the centurion towards his servants. That is number two example. The first one was him building a synagogue out of love for the God of Israel. Now number two is that we are seeing the same love for the love of God that he has. He has extended it to his servant. So what did he do now? by going all out to look for help for his sick servant to get well. He went all out. If it were other bosses, they will sack that servant and hire another because that servant is not any of use to them. So they will allow that servant who is at the point of death to die. But this man did not. He went all out. Yes. He went all out for his servant. That means his family is not, his immediate family is not only his a priority and is not only the important people. And they are not, sorry, only the important people in his life. Please note that this centurion is not a preacher. He is not an evangelist. He is not a pastor. He is not a bishop. For someone to say, okay, it's because he's a pastor that's why he went there he is just a soldier but he understood the meaning of love 
especially love for God, which he kept on doing because it's not a one-time ex expression, but an active, abiding, ongoing relationship of following and obeying our loving master. Praise the Lord. So we know, John, 1 John 2 verse 3 says, We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. And that was what the centurion was doing. Now, love for God makes that is coming to a conclusion. I promise not to take much of your time. Love for God makes one extend the same love to his fellow man. If you don't have love, there is no way. If you don't have love, there's no way you can show others love. Now, in our world today, the question is, is, this, is there still love or is there or greed which supersedes the other? The question I am posing to you today, my fellow Christian brethren, is what have you done for the love of God? What have you done for the love of God? I am not asking you to build a synagogue. I am not asking you to donate money to the church. Neither am I asking you to become a pastor or evangelist. For, for it to become something that you have done for God. Uh, to, uh, in showing that you have done something for the love of God. Not at all. Do you know that if you always tell the truth. No matter what. No matter what may befall you, you tell the truth. Do you know that you are doing something for the love of God? If you only stand by that truth, that is really, 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 really enough. At least if you're a pastor, for instance, when you climb your pulpit to preach, endeavor to tell the people the truth. Do not lie to the people. At least by this action, God will see that you are genuine. And he will see that you don't, have, you don't need to have eyes to tell the truth. You will stand by the truth. Since ministry, to run a ministry, you need eyes, spiritual eyes, to be able to see the people's problem and prophesy and also see the, the solution to it. When you stand for the truth, I believe that God will have mercy and give you eyes for your ministry. So we should as clergy to always stand by the truth. Even if, if it will get us into trouble, stand by it. The Bible says, ye shall know the truth and shall set you free. It doesn't say ye shall know the truth and you will be arrested or you will be killed. It sets you free. It may look as if it was going to put you in trouble, but at the tail end, you will come out victorious. Hallelujah. Now, what have we learned today? I personally learned that by just standing by the truth, especially the truth of the word of God, is enough something that I can do. For the love of God. To crown it all, loving God is an active, abiding, ongoing relationship of following and obeying our loving master. That is the theme for today. Loving God is an active, abiding, ongoing relationship of following and obeying our master, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And how do you know his love? Hosea 6 3 makes it clear. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. So you, it is a continuous process. You will continue following to know. So now, as I'm closing, I pray that you will make yourself available for God to teach you how to love him. And then you, in return, reciprocate 
that love back to others. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. So, if you have not yet given your life to Jesus, this is the time to do so. So, say this if you want to do so. Lord Jesus, I come before your throne of grace and I ask for mercy. I have realized that I am a terrible sinner and I have come to make amends. Lord Jesus, please forgive me my sins. Cleanse me from every trace of unrighteousness. I have recognized that you died and rose on the cross of Calvary for me. And today I am making you my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, Father, for accepting me as your own. Thank you, Jesus, for making me your own today. I will never look back but looking up to you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So if you have said that prayer, welcome to the family of Yeshua Amashiach. I'll leave you with this. God bless you. God keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you his peace and his peace alone. Shalom.